If you search what I eat in a day on YouTube, some of the top performing videos of all time are those by Victoria's Secret models. <gasps> Shocker, I know. These angels are considered some of the world's most beautiful women of all time, who manage to maintain a flat stomach, long lean legs, and those perky voluptuous breasts. Let's be real, most of us cannot relate, especially those of us who pumped and breastfed two little hungry gremlins for two years of our lives. So today I aim to do the seemingly impossible. Follow the diet of a supermodel, but like make it relatable. Witchcraft, maybe. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I'll be eating like model, content creator, and new mom, Romy Stride. But as usual, I'll be dressing up Abby style and turning into hunger crushing combos that I actually want to eat. A quick disclaimer that this diet was compiled from a bunch of primary sources that I found on YouTube, but we actually don't know if this is how Romy eats every single day. Not that it matters because I will only be using these alleged meals as a template for teaching gentle nutrition and for inspiring what I decide to make for myself. This is just what I ate on a random day and it's not meant to be copied or recommended as how you should eat. So as always, speak to a registered dietitian about your unique needs. We are officially in the holiday season, which means a slightly overwhelming social calendar over here. I mean, between the holiday parties and my 35th birthday in December, I will probably be enjoying my fair share of adult bevies this month, just saying. But. I am no spring chicken, so as much as I love my Pinot Grigio, I'm admittedly pretty sensitive to alcohol. So sometimes even one glass of wine can make me feel off the next day. So I was totally geeking out when I got sent this Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink, like just in time for the holidays. I mean, it's not often that I get really excited about a new food or supplement technology, but when I try this before going out and having a few little drinky drinks, it totally blew my mind. This is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic that's been scientifically designed to break down the byproduct of alcohol acetaldehyde that's responsible for those not so fun mornings. The way it works is you drink a bottle of Zbiotics before you have an alcoholic drink and the probiotic produces a unique enzyme like the one your liver naturally uses to break down the byproduct responsible for that not so fun morning. It actually worked. This is absolutely not an invitation to binge drink. I mean, alcohol is still not a healthy food and should always be treated as a substance to be enjoyed in moderation. We all know that overconsumption can lead to poor sleep, digestive distress, liver damage, and probably a lot of bad decisions. But if it means I can show up to the Tuesday night holiday party have a modest glass of wine and still wake up to screaming kids at 5 a.m. and work a full day without missing a beat, I am here for it. I cannot stress enough how impressed I was with this product. I literally just bought an entire case and I'm going to be giving them out to friends at my birthday party because that's how excited I am about this. It's like an adult loot bag, but you get it before the party starts. So if you wanna give Zbiotics a try, check out my link in the description and use my promo code ABBYSHARP to get 15% off of your first order. They also offer a full money back guarantee if you're not satisfied with your purchase. But honestly, I don't know how you cannot be. It's pretty amazing. All right, back to the video. Okay, so hallelujah guys, I managed to find a video of the Victoria's Secret model after she became a mom, hoping that like maybe I would find it somewhat relatable and doable. Like most of these wellness creators are doing like 12 step beverage rituals in the morning and your girl just don't have time for that. In my experience, motherhood really can force people into more like extremist, like fringe wellness communities or it can like soften pre-existing obsessions around food and wellness just because you've already got so many balls that you're trying to juggle and you just find that trying to control food or your health in such an extreme way just no longer is a priority or serves you. 
I definitely fall into the latter group and I'm really hoping that Romy does too. Because yeah, even if we would love to, I would say most moms don't have time to put together a perfectly styled smoothie bowl every morning. So let's get into it. Romy, what's for breakfast? Before my workout, I'll just have a coffee. Usually I was the one to have breakfast first thing in the morning. Uh, then since I do only like a 30 minute workout where I'm not doing a lot of cardio, but just like simple exercises, I think I'll be fine with the coffee and making my brekkie after. This is great. I love this because this is pretty much what I've been doing most days of the week, um, just because it's what's convenient to me and it fits into my family schedule. But this is usually around the time when all the holistic nutritionists just like come out of the woodwork and say, oh no, 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 no. You can never drink coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Abby, can you explain? So a lot of influencers insist that you shouldn't drink coffee on an empty stomach in the morning because it allegedly raises your cortisol at a point in the day when cortisol is naturally high. And this is theoretically true, but in real life, it's actually not a huge deal. Some studies suggest that caffeine can increase cortisol levels both at rest and during periods of stress, but other research has found no increase in cortisol levels at all. And this individual variation likely has to do with one's sensitivity to stress, anxiety, high blood pressure, and most importantly, their tolerance to caffeine. Here's the really important piece of information that wellness influencers don't tell you. The impact of caffeine on cortisol levels seems to diminish with regular caffeine consumption. In other words, if you regularly drink coffee within like an hour of waking up, like most human freaking beings, your body adapts to this habit and it learns like, nope, this isn't a bear coming at me. It's just my usual double-double and a bagel. And this significantly blends the transient effects on cortisol. And that's another really important keyword here, transient. Like cortisol levels are constantly changing throughout the day. So it's natural to see them ebb and flow. Now I appreciate that if you have like a million things working against you and your anxiety disorder, then it's absolutely worth taking all of these little tiny steps to maybe reduce stress and abnormal cortisol levels in the day. But for most people, the minute minute transient effect of a daily cup of coffee on cortisol levels are unlikely to cause long-term harm. As for the empty stomach concern, I would say it theoretically makes sense to have some food with your coffee if you experience ill effects, though we really don't have any actual evidence that it would make a big difference. So as always, experiment to see what feels best to you. Yeah, I have literally noticed no difference whatsoever in my stress levels because I actually did a period where I removed caffeine from my diet just to see if it was gonna improve my sleep and my anxiety. It did not help. I do have a sensitive tummy, so I do find that having like drip black coffee or just having like a splash of milk in it first thing in the morning with no food, that can sometimes upset my stomach a little bit, but that's why I pretty much always have like a latte which has some milk in it. So we've got some carbohydrates, some fats, some protein. It's basically like a mini, 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 mini snack. And that really seems to be what feels best to me. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's coffee, I swear. All right, coffee down. I'm gonna go get ready for a workout. I'm not sure what I'll be having for breakfast. Usually I have like either rice cakes with avocado and egg or yogurt with blueberries, peanut butter, goji berries. So I think I'll go for the yogurt. Okay, so I love this. Um, this is definitely something that I would make myself, but I am a full fat yogurt girly through and through. Honestly, it just tastes miles better and it has some really important health benefits as well. More and more recent research seems to be flipping the script on saturated fats. One 22 year study found that full fat dairy may actually be protective against heart disease. And another meta-analysis found that full fat dairy was inversely related to obesity risk. It also appears to be more favorable over low or non-fat for fertility and insulin resistance, especially in folks with PCOS. And since it provides both satiating protein and fat for my hunger crushing combo, and also it's just generally 
actually like way more satisfying. I'm a huge believer in choosing full fat. All right, we're starting with some plain full fat Greek yogurts. We got fats, we got protein, lots of good stuff there. Mm. Let's do some banana. That's not in uh, Romy's traditional mix, but I like banana and I've got some ones that are near their end of their life and I gotta use it today. Otherwise I'm gonna be forced to make banana bread and your girl doesn't have time to make banana bread. So we got bloops. Look how massive these blueberries are. They're good. Blueberries either have to be itty bitty or big honkers, right? There's no in between good blueberries in my opinion. Mm. She likes strawberries. Strawberries are not in season here, but I do have these like freeze dried strawberries, which I'm obsessed with. My kids think they're like literally candy. They're so delicious, so sweet, so expensive. <laughs> but you know what? They're a really good snack. So that's going down. Give those. Now, these are some of her favorites. She uses goji berries. Mm -hmm. They're sweet. They're better than I remember. And they add nice color. Look at that. So some of that. You guys know I'm obsessed with hemp hearts. Can't go wrong. Fiber, protein, healthy fats, all the goods. Chia, like that. Again, this is not something that Romy does, but I feel like this bowl for me for breakfast needs a little bit more carbs. So I love cereal, cereal loves me, and I always have a lot of cereal in my house. So this is one of my current favorites. It's called Puffins. It's a nice high fiber cereal. I'm gonna throw that on top for some extra carbs, extra fiber, and extra crunch. And then she's also got some uh, nuts, so I'm gonna do that too. Lots of healthy fats. Look at this. This is gonna be like, mmm, quite the breakfast. And it's assembly style. We love to see it. All right, let's recap. Protein in the yogurt, plus of course all the nuts and seeds. Tons of healthy fats, hemp, chia, uh, the pecans here, so much fiber from the fruit and the cereal. I mean, it's a beautiful bowl. It's packed with antioxidants. Can't go wrong. It's a huge upgrade from my usual yogurt bowls in the morning, which is basically, you know, whatever leftover spoonfuls are left from my kid's snotty yogurt from the morning. Doesn't look like this. Let's see how she tastes. Look at that. Just like attaches glue. Mmm. Oh, so good. All right, I'm gonna finish up here, do a little bit of work, and I'll meet you back here at lunch. All right, so for lunch, it looks like Romy does a little ordering in, which we love because it means one last thing I have to cook. Let's take a look. Okay, lunch has arrived. The little one is awake. Got the salad and the chicken avocado sandwich bagel. So I am all about ordering in lunch when I feel like I can afford it because I always find that lunch hour is like the hardest time of day to commit to cooking a meal from scratch. So if I don't have leftovers from the night before, I'm usually just kind of like throwing together like a real hodgepodge of a meal. Um, but it's Friday here while we're filming and I want to splurge. I don't want to do too much if I don't have to. I'm tired. So I'm excited about this. And I also don't think it's very realistic for people who are watching at home to see these creators making three beautifully styled meals a day plus snacks. I mean, ain't nobody got time for that. So leftovers, hodgepodge assembly, takeout, that's kind of how I roll for lunch. And if Romy's going to order in, I'm definitely going to order in. Now, I don't live in LA, so I don't have as many like beautiful kind of gourmet lunch places that make really fancy salads and stuff like that. We have a few, but not so much. Uh, but I'm going to try to find something relatively similar, and I'm sure it'll be really satisfying. Da -da -da -da! Take out. And I got some extra bagels for the rest of the weekend, so we love a double duty up like that. All right. Got our fresh Montreal bagels, cinnamon, pumpernickel, uh, sesame. Excited. And then got, well, this is supposed to be the salad. It looks sad, but maybe there's stuff underneath. I'll show you in a sec. It's like, oh yeah, okay. It's just very strangely layered. I'm gonna have to deconstruct it for you guys. And let's take a look, see. This one's, I think, mine. Brody, this is yours. We've got a whole operation here. Okay. 
They gave me Caesar dressing, unusual choice, but we're gonna work with it. All right, so they didn't have chicken and avocado on a bagel like our girl Romy has ordered. So I just got avocado because I knew that I had some leftover chicken in the fridge. And this way I'm kind of saving money because I'm not having to buy like everything from scratch and like add six bucks for adding on the chicken or whatever. I got some right here and we can use that up. All right, so let's just layer in some chicken. This is gonna be a challenging sandwich to get my little mouth around. Okay, but look at that. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, the avocado makes it slippery and I feel like they overdid it on the lettuce, which is making it too difficult. Oh, all right, I'll just put this here for now. Let's try to dig and see what is undercover in this salad here. Such a mystery. We got some spinach and lettuce, cucumber. This is so, so strange. Tomatoes. Okay, but guys, I literally ordered the avocado salad. I hate to be the asshole that has to like complain to Uber about these things, but that's disappointing. I gotta zhuzh this up, so I'm excited to eat it. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Let's fix this mess. I like a little sprinkle sprinkle of some hemp hearts. We got some sunflower seeds. We got pistachios, more crunch. I found this in my fridge. Mmm, crispy fried shallots. I feel like that's gonna be delicious. Yum, yes. Cheese is a must, so we got some feta here. I'm gonna make up for the lost avocado that I paid for and did not get. You know what, everyone makes mistakes and I'm sure it was an honest mistake, so. Service staff I know work super, super hard and they're overworked. Okay, I don't know if it's overkill on the bagel, but I'm going for it. We're going all in. I've got some bagel seasoning. Why not? I've got a little bit of some, ooh, that was aggressive. Two shots of vodka. White balsamic vinaigrette. See how she goes. Uh, this looks good. I wanna try this now. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful salad. We fixed it, guys. Yay! All right, cheers. Ooh, you got the Montreal smoked meat? Damn! I wish supermodels liked smoked meat. They are missing out, because that is always a good choice. But avocado always slaps. Oh, it's gonna be a tough one to get in the old mouth. That's a new technique, the dive. Not this way, like a hot dog. Mm. It's good though. All right, just picked up the kids from school. They are getting hungry. So let's see what we're having for dinner. Okay, so I've watched a lot of Romy's vlogs and she's a big fan of like the Buddha bowl style meals. And she also loves a lot of ingredients that are rich in healthy fats, like salmon, avocado, and nuts. And I do tend to eat a lot of fats, like a lot of avocado and a lot of salmon because it keeps me full and I just love the taste of it. We love to see that. I mean, fat is such an important part of the hunger crushing combo. Abby, tell us more. And I think a lot of folks who grew up in diet culture still are a bit anxious about fats because fat contains more calories than carbs and protein. But fats are inherently satiating and have been shown to help regulate appetite through a number of important mechanisms. For example, fats can slow gastric emptying, which can also benefit our blood sugar levels while regulating the hormones responsible for our appetite. Research also suggests that combining fat with fiber has an even greater synergistic effect on satiety, which is why foods like avocados, for example, or even like a Buddha bowl with veggies and fats can be so inherently filling. Okay, so in this one video I watched of hers, she made this beautiful beautiful looking bowl that had rice, salmon, avocado, spinach, Brussels sprouts, pretty much all of my favorite ingredients. So I'm gonna try to replicate that. All right, so let's assemble this bowl. We got some spinach, it's gonna go down first, just to like that. I got some rice that I cooked, and I actually cooked this in bone broth just to bump up the protein even more. And also it adds like a lot of really good flavor. Let's go grab our salmon. All right, this is a generous piece of salmon. I feel like I'll save this little tiny piece for my kiddos. There we go. Beaut. Let's 
some roasted Brussels. Avocado, of course. This one might be overripe. We're gonna have to see when we get in there. Yeah, she's not feeling so hot. Oh no. Wow. Wow. Okay, I gotta back up. Some chunks. Avocado. You're so creamy and good. A little more. Oh. <gasps> Yikes. <sighs> Are you gonna start a counter of all my my mess making? Okay. All right, let's just clean this up for a minute. My mother taught me to always clean as you go, which I try to do. Mama, hope I made you proud. Okay, we need nuts in this situation. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Some pistachios are gonna be a beautiful option. I'm gonna add some gorgeous color and a really nice crunch. And I just feel like any of these like rice bowls need some kind of sauce. Like almost like a dressing meets something a little like creamy. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna make. A little tahini, a little bit of greedy mustard. I got some lemon here. Fish out of seed. And some leaves while we're at it. Nice. Maple syrup. To balance that out. A little olive oil. Just to thin it out. Looks good. Oh, salt and pepper, always essential. I add cheese to everything, so. Some feta. Okay, this is a bowl your girl wants to eat. We have lots of carbs and some fiber in our rice plus tons of fiber in all the vegetables and the nuts and the avocado, healthy fats in the nuts, avocado, and salmon, protein in the salmon. We've got more healthy fats, I just realized, in the tahini. I mean, whoa, this is a nutrient-dense bowl that looks delicious and I'm sure is going to taste damn good. Let's get in there. Yep, she good. The tahini makes it. Romy, take note. Okay, so I went through like all the recent vlog footage that I saw from Romy and I didn't see any kind of evidence of like a bedtime snack or dessert. I always have some kind of bedtime snack and or dessert. Sometimes those things are like the same thing, but I know she's into snacking on nuts. nuts! So I thought we would put together like a really great sleep supporting nut trail mix. Let me show you my fave. All right, this couldn't be simpler. That was awkward as <laughs> Don't know why I ate, okay. Anyways, we got popcorn, pre-popped popcorn, because again, I'm busy and I don't wanna always have to pop it myself. So I just buy it in the bag, kill me. I've got some more of my pistachios because I guess that's the nut of the day here and I'm feeling it. Pistachios are delicious with popcorn. And these ones are actually crazy good. They're the sea salt vinegar one. That with popcorn, <laughs> slaps. All right, and then my new found favorite bedtime snack, tart cherries. I'm gonna throw those in there too. I don't know how it's gonna work with the salt and vinegar, but I am ready to take the risk. Let's, I guess let's get all these in. Mmm, it's pretty good. Sweet, salty, kind of buttery, vinegary. We're hitting all the marks here, folks. This is like a, a gourmet snack meal. Mm. And you guys know that I'm not a great sleeper on a good night, so I always try to have like a really good hunger crushing combo snack before bed. Plus the tart cherries do have some extra benefits. Tart cherries have been cited as a natural sleep remedy for decades. And we actually have some evidence that consuming tart cherry juice before bed increases exogenous melatonin production and enhances our sleep quality. Now, realistically, you would have to consume a ton of actual whole food tart cherries to reach the clinical dose used in the research. But I certainly don't think that it hurts to add a few of them to your bedtime snack. Honestly, this day was totally my style. All the meals were like beautifully balanced with protein, fiber, and healthy fats, and they were really delicious as well, so I definitely like looked forward to eating them. 
Not to mention, most importantly, they actually felt like something that I could do and manage on a regular basis on a busy work week, especially because I got to order lunch in. I don't typically watch any kind of like mom vlog content on YouTube, mainly because I'm just really against broadcasting images of our kids online, but I would definitely continue to watch some of Uromi's food content for some easy meal inspiration. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like me to try next, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye!